Okay, well, let's begin here with the general bones of the skull. You can appreciate how this bone in the front is called the frontal bone. It's delineated by this suture, which we refer to as the coronal or frontal suture. Actually, coronal su suture is what we usually say. And then this is, of course, the sagittal suture coming down here. And that delineates two bones on the side, which are referred to as the parietal bones. Coming down here, the squamosal suture separates the temporal bone from the parietal bone. And in the back of the skull, we have this sort of Y-shaped structure. And remember, this is still sagittal suture, but then this structure here is what we refer to as the lambdoidal suture. Lambdoidal refers to the fact that this does look like a Y. And then this, of course, is the occipital bone. Now, these are some of the main bones of the cranial vault. There's another bone that we barely see, and that's this bone here. This is referred to as the ethmoid bone. We also see this sort of plate in front of the skull right here, if I can get to it, right there. And that is referred to as the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. So we see a little bit of the ethmoid bone um, in the uh, frontal view of the skull although not very much of it. The, frontal, the uh, ethmoid bone pretty much stays hidden. Okay, let's take a look at some facial bones here. Ones that make the bridge of the nose are referred to as the nasal bone. The bones that hold the upper teeth right here referred to as the maxillary bone or the maxilla. And this is the zygomatic bone here. And then this bone is the lacrimal bone. The lacrimal bone is kind of delineated by this pit and also a hole which we refer to as the lacrimal foramen. Anytime you have a pit, uh, it's referred to as a fossa. Anytime you have a hole, it's called either a canal or a foramen. All right, now, some more facial bones. This big bone down here is referred to as the mandible. And um, if we spin the skull over this way, so we're looking at the base of the skull, we see a little bone right here, this plate, which is referred to as the palatine bone. Now, this bone is referred to as the maxillary bone, but it holds the teeth, right? It's not part of the palatine bone, but we refer to this as the palatine process of the maxillary bone. Um, this bone in the back is the vomer bone. That's the vomer bone. And then the bones on either side of the vomer are referred to as the sphenoid bones. Now, the sphenoid actually comes, it's actually one big flat bone. It doesn't include the uh, vomer bone. It comes all the way here, and we can actually see a bit of the sphenoid right here. So this is sphenoid. So you can appreciate frontal, parietal, temporal, and then the sphenoid bone right here. Okay, so those are some basic bones. Um, let's take a look at some structures on the bones themselves, and let's begin with the frontal bone. These ridges are more pronounced on uh, men than women, and this is referred to as the superciliary arch. Superciliary arch, kind of where the eyebrows are. The region right here is the glabella. That is the place between the eyebrows. The term glabella means hairless and it is hairless on at least most people, not all people. Let's travel down here to the parietal bone and this white part on the parietal is referred to as the parietal eminence. That's the whitest part in the skull, the parietal eminence. And then we see superior and, to a lesser degree, inferior temporal lines. These actually travel along the, the lateral portion of the parietal bone. And they are regions of uh, attachment for the temporalis muscle. You take a look at the temporal bone. You can see that there's a prong coming off the temporal bone. 
it joins with the zygomatic bone to form what's called the zygomatic arch. But this region here, which is separated by the small suture, is referred to as the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, whereas this portion of the zygomatic bone is called the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. So it's the zygomatic process of the temporal bone and the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. This one is called the infraorbital foramen. This is where uh, not only do we have maxillary arteries traveling through here, but also branches of the trigeminal nerve called the maxillary branch. And then this little opening here and here for that matter, these are called supraorbital foramen. And this is where the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve comes out. This little point here is on the maxillary bone. It looks like it should be vomer, but it isn't. And that is referred to as the maxillary spine. Um, as we travel down here, on the actual mandible, we have something called the mental foramen. And this is where branches of the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve come out.